second now I'm going to do a little video real quick on how to aim for throwing the shot or gearing it. So I played a match 10 years ago now and uh, well not, not quite 10 years ago I guess was 2021 so 8 years ago now 2013 I think and um, the guy that won the match loves to pull out shots throughout the whole 9 hours that we played and denigrate me and say oh look at this guy with this terrible stroke and everything such a wonky wacky guy and he'd be right you know a lot of the strokes a lot of the, the after shots I do a lot of jumping and twisting and all kinds of crazy stuff because I just have a lot of bad habits you know and in this match which was a big match um, it was for ten thousand um, dollars I was an emotional wreck I was nervous I was jumping around I was you know I, I, it took me a long time to calm down so the first four or five games you know I was I was giving up a lot of games just just stupid shots so anyway uh, towards the end of the night though the first night um, I was on the hill and then I, I, I gave up a ball so then I made a foul right after that and then left him with ball in hand with uh, basically a spot shot and um, so this guy practices, you know, four or five hours a day, talks about how he's practiced that way all of his life, and it's just, and, and in his mind, hit a million balls is the only way to get good, and so on. So you would assume that, I assumed, you know, that uh, the set's over, right? He was on eight, I was on five, and um, I assumed that, you know, I screwed up, left him ball in hand with the shot, the set should be over. Anyway, he dogs the ball like this. We're playing one pocket, so I'm gonna do this on a bar table, but imagine it's a big table. Anyway, um, he has this shot, something along these lines. And there was a ball here, it wasn't a spot shot, it was something along the, like this. And so he sets the ball up to shoot it, and he wants to, he wants to, he can make a ball here. So he wants to basically um, draw the seven, draw it to the rail over here, right? But when he shoots the shot though, he misses it by a half a diamond. And he ends up leaving me something like this. Let's see if I can do it. So he ends up leaving me a bank in here, right? But the problem is, in my opinion, is he didn't know how to aim this shot for that. So the way to aim the shot is, again, in my opinion, the way to aim the shot is to aim it center to center and then use spin. So actually when I'm aiming it center to center, I'm aiming it to here. Now you can also aim it, you know, a little bit fuller to here and but I find that I can, on this type of angle, I can do this with, uh, with center to center. So I'm gonna go center to center, go down right here. Now all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come over with spin now. So I'm using right hand spin and I'm gonna spin this ball in. And it's gonna, because I'm hitting it actually flat right here, if I do it right, it's gonna go make the ball, and the cue ball is going to act like it was a straight shot and it's going to come back a little bit this way. Now it's going to get a little gearing angle, so it's not actually going to come straight back. It's going to go more like this. Let's see if I can do it. Okay, center to center aim. In this case, I'm putting right spin on the ball. I'm not putting a lot. So you see how we made the ball? Now what I didn't do was I didn't draw it enough. Because I wanted to draw it off of there, it would have come here, so more flat this way. So let's do it one more time. So here's our shot. And I'll include a link to the video as well so you guys can see the actual shot that was taken and then you can you can make up your own minds or discuss you know we can discuss what what, what you think happened okay
I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying that from my experience, I think this would be the better way to go. I would even put it a little bit close, as close to the rail over here as I could to get it as flat as possible. But, um, but anyway, let's go center to center. Okay. Now I'm going to dig it in with low right. Now I'm really going to dig in and put a good stroke on it. You'll see there how I pulled it over and got it that way a little bit more, so now I have a shot. And if you'll see in the video, you'll see that he, if he would have put the cue ball anywhere in here, he had shots. Um, so actually what he did was he gave me a shot to bank it, and I banked it, and then my ball stayed right about here, and I was able to put my cue ball up table. Let's do this one more time and see if I can put a really good stroke on it here. But the important part here is that the, we're talking about the aiming technique and that is coupled with the good stroke, okay? He could have also done this with a follow. Here, I'll try that so you can see it. So center to center. Now we're going to put a little bit of right spin with pop on here. And I'm going to put it back up in this area. You see here? So the contention is um, by uh, one of the critics of, of uh, center to edge aiming, when I ask about this, his contention is, is that, that no shots are ever missed. No shots are ever missed because of aiming, that all shots or the vast majority of shots are missed because of stroke error. So here I am playing a guy who, who believes that the only possible way to get good is to hit a million balls. And he practices, he details all of his practice, you know, practices four hours a day, every single day. And this was what he said, you know, in the years leading up to playing me. And I've played the guy before, and he has a good stroke, right? So what should we assume from him missing a shot like this at a critical time in the match? Did he aim correctly? Did he stroke correctly? Did he aim incorrectly and stroke correctly? Did he aim incorrectly and stroke incorrectly? Which is it? But in any event, if I have that shot, you can see that I have a way to aim it because I understand, I understand the interactions of the balls here. So I understand that I can aim this not to cut it. I can aim it right into the rail and make it through spin and gearing of the ball. This is spin-induced throw. See, I'm, still, I'm still weak. My stroke right there is weak because I'm not pulling it back to come back up in here. But you can see, I think from the example that I just gave three or four times there, um, of how that works. So here, I'll do it one last time. This time I'm really gonna, I'm gonna try hard to really draw this now. We're gonna see what happens, okay? So I'm gonna focus more on the draw and just give it a little extra juice on the spin here, but the, the tip is gonna be just like one tip of right English. So there, I juiced it too much, see that? So actually, I think I, I, I hit it with more RPMs, so to speak, on there. So let's do it again. Okay, center to center. Center to center. Now I'm going to give it a little bit more juice and try to be try to be more conscious of the draw here. There we go. See that? And that's a little bit of a balance, right? So you have to figure that out, you know? And yes, you can, you can throw a ball off the line. This is the thing that, that we always say with center to edge aiming. Getting on the perfect shot line doesn't ensure that you're gonna make the ball. In some ways, it actually makes it 
harder because now your, your margin of error um, might have decreased. You know, so for example, if you were if you were aiming actually at a part of the pocket over here, and because of their cut angle that you were that you were choosing, you might have actually had more pocket that favors your your particular type of stroke error, which would be a reason for having good results on in cutting in one direction and maybe bad results cutting in the other direction because your bad habit, your bad stroke habit, might end up being what causes you to have inconsistent results on cutting in one direction and much, much better results cutting in the other direction. So if you understand this though, and, and you know that you're using the centered edge method right and you're getting right on the cut line, right on the shot line perfectly, then you have to teach yourself A, to stroke straight if you already don't know how to. Most of us know how to, but then when we get in games or we get in nerve situations, you know, um, tough situations. If we've had bad habits before, those bad habits might creep back in, you know. It might take a lot of extra work to overcome those bad habits and shoot straight. Now, the other thing is, if you want to use side spin, then you have to know how to account for that, you know. That's going to change things. It will change that, that aiming line, that shot line, and if you know how to compensate for it, if you know what your cue will do when you, how it deflects and everything, then you can adjust for that. But the technique I just showed you where you can deliberately aim off of the, the, the regular shot line, the normal cut shot line that you would have if you were hitting, say, center ball or on the, on the vertical axis, um, you can aim deliberately away from the pocket and gear it in using spin-induced throw to throw the ball in the direction that you want it to go in. Um, this is something that uh, Earl Strickland, for example, calls the little spins, you know. You'll hear him sometimes in commentary, he'll mention it, he'll say, he'll say, yeah, you know, when you're playing, you gotta watch out, you gotta watch out for the little spins and know when to use them, right? Well, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about the little spins. You know, he, he's talking about the little spins. He's talking about spinning the ball in. He's talking about gearing it in using spin-induced throw. Dr. Dave has some good information on this. Um, you know, so so there's there's good there. What I'm trying to say is is there's good technique to be learned by paying attention to what the balls actually do. You can actually aim much more objectively and reduce the amount of feel, reduce the amount of guessing that come into play in your shots. So as you saw right there, you know, um, I can do it here too, see? In this one right here, instead of going right here, and trying to, to spin the ball in that way, I'm going to actually do a three-quarter hit, which is like this, which would cut the ball right there. And the reason is, is because I can comfortably get in here. I know I'm getting a lot of meat of the ball. Now watch me spin this in. Oops. A little bit tougher right there, but that's okay. I can still do it. So if I were using centered edge aiming, for example, and I just wanted to straight up cut it in, this is what I would do. And I would pivot to center, and I know that I have my aim right there. But if for some reason, if there was some reason, for example, for example, let's say I wanted to uh, get out of the scratch, right? So if we had something like this where it might be a scratch shot with the cut angle, right? And I wanted to try to spin this in, I would get up here like this, and actually, if I were to cut this straight, it would go right here. So let's see what happens. Not enough, see? So I would work on that until I get it. So let's do it again. And this is the kind of shot where you'll see people swipe a little bit or come over. Okay, here we go. So this one, I'm, I'm aiming for a three-quarter hit right here. This has nothing to do with center to edge right here. This is just a straight up, like a three-quarter kind of hit on the ball and a lot of 
of spin. And there we go. See, it took a lot of effort right there. It took a lot of effort right there to spin that in. But again, these are things that when you know them, when you really understand them and you know them, then you can use them to your advantage objectively. Okay? Now in that situation right there, I had several things that I was guessing at from that angle. I was saying, okay, I think I can do this with a three-quarter ball hit. And I think that if I spin it enough, it'll throw it enough toward the pocket. Now, that last couple shots right there, that was quite a little stretch from that position. Um, but you'll learn, if you practice that technique, you would learn the different ways that you could use it. So for example, it's really good to get out of scratches, but it's also really good to help you with your regular position play. Because here, the cut angle on this shot is going to take me on the tangent line this direction, right? If I just cut it with no spin. But if I cut it with spin, if I aim it, for example, right here, then I'm hitting the ball flat. So now, I'm coming, I would be coming right back if I had no spin. I also wouldn't make the ball. But if I have spin, now it changes my tangent line angle from here to here. So if we look at it like this, we can say that my tangent line angle is going to be about this direction if I throw it in, right? Now, if I hit it with enough meat of the ball, I can actually bend it back beyond that tangent line angle. So normally the ball wants to go that way if it was cut here, if that would be the ghost ball position. Now my tangent line is going this way and it would be much harder for me to pull it back here from there. So let's try it. Now I'm going to either try to hit this three or I'm going to try to pull the cue ball off the line away from that tangent line. Let's see what happens. But still make the ball. And this is asking a lot right here because this is also a lot of spin that's required. But let's just see what happens. Okay? So now I'm going to super spin it right here. <laughs> of course. I am the worst person in the world to show these concepts, to be honest. Alright, here we go. So. Here's our shot. We're aiming it right here, center to center. Lots of chalk on there. Okay. See that? Look how, look at how good I pulled it back right there. And a lot of times people will do this by accident. You won't even realize you did it. And then you'll be like, you don't even know what you did because the ball will go in an unexpected direction. And, uh, and it's usually because you did something like this. You were actually aimed wrong trying to get shape because instinctively you know where you need to get shape. So you're trying to do what we call cheating the pocket. You know, cheating the pocket is another way, uh, another thing that people say um, when what they mean is they're trying to hit the ball flatter to change the angle of the shot. Let's see what happens here. right there and pull back this way. I think that that's one of the neatest things in pull, you know, one of that phenomenon right there. Um, you know, we've all seen people do stuff like this where they can pull it back and, and have the ball spin off in that direction, right? Um, but did you know that you can use that, that gearing right there that happens to direct the object ball. And that's what's really cool. You know, so if, I, if for example, if you wanted to use it the other direction and you wanted to go flat, go straight flat here, instead of cutting it and coming in this direction, if you want it to go flatter, like more towards the headphones right there, you could do the exact same thing. You see here how I'm aimed center to center, 
right here. So this is center to center. If I shot this ball with no spin, it would go right into the rail. So we're going to add spin to it. Oh, I'm going to add a little bit more. Sorry. My bad. Terrible. Now we're going to spin it. And all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hit it like a lot of uh, top left right there. Needs more spin. More cowbell, please. And once you figure this out, it's the neatest thing. So in this case right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually not go center to center because we have a short distance here. I'm going to actually go like one eight, right? Just a little, just a little bit off of full for this because I need to, I need to keep it relatively flat, but I need to to get enough gearing to make it. There we go, that's better. So you'll notice that on that case right there, I wasn't able to pull it into the headphones, but I was able to stop it from going down to the corner right there. And this is, to be honest with you, you know, this is a feel thing on this. If you're, if you're going to use this technique, you definitely want to learn your feel for it to learn what your cue will do, how much deflection it produces. You know, so if I played with this cue for about an hour, I would, I would know that already, and I would have it. Okay, here we go. Three quarters, now about one eighth off. How flat we can make that come right there. Much flatter than normal. Now just to prove that what I said is this would be straight, Okay, there's our headphones. Okay, now I'm going to go straight top here and I'm going to go just a hair right there. Okay, so that's about all I can get out of that, that particular shot. So, but there you go. Anyway. It wouldn't be a John Barton video if I didn't try to show you techniques and miss half the shots I try. But, uh, but you can try this yourself and you can see for yourself you know, what your parameters are and what will work and what won't. Um, I just think that it's interesting that the people who knock center to edge aiming, they will say things like, well, my experience tells me that this is, this is X, Y, or Z, right? This is what it is. But if a CTE user says, if a center to edge user says, my experience is showing me this, I'm getting better results using center to edge aiming, uh, suddenly those people's experience doesn't matter. So, you know, I've got uh, a one pocket match, like I said, with nine hours of video on there. There's a lot of goofy shit that I do that, uh, that looks terrible. There are some good shots that I made. Um, I was using CTE for just about every shot, but, uh, but my, my own bad habits uh, came back in full force, you know? So, so whatever I had done to try to straighten out my stroke and make sure I stayed, stayed down and stayed good under pressure, uh, most of that dissipated um, through the emotion and the and the, uh, the the stress of the situation, um, but conversely, right? I was playing somebody who was, uh, you know, the guy is a hundred ball runner in straight pool. He just claimed with no evidence that he's run 150. Um, so let's just believe him and say, okay, fine, you ran 150. Then one would expect that a 150 ball runner would not miss most of the shots that are that this guy misses on video in that match so you know he likes to claim that uh that he was hustling me and everything like this and whatever the fact of it is is the guy won't play anybody he had to be dragged into the match and his play in the match is if anything an example of the fact that you can tell everybody that you practice four hours a day. You can, you can, can say that hitting a million balls 
is what it takes to get you to a level and that CTE or aiming systems are, are no good or unnecessary. But then when you step up to the table, there shouldn't be any easy shots that you're missing, you know? Um, and you should make most of the difficult ones too. So there's nine hours of this guy dogging shots and one has to ask themselves, either he didn't train well enough to train his stroke or he doesn't really aim that well for a lot of the shots that he takes or some combination of both. I mean, to me, that would be the logical conclusion if one is going to say that hitting a million balls or he didn't hit a million balls like he said he did. But, you know, by reports, he used to go every morning and practice for about, you know, four hours uh, by himself. And um, so, you know, one would figure that his stroke has got to be grooved in. So if his stroke is grooved in, then maybe he doesn't understand aiming and like he thinks he does. Uh, or maybe he doesn't understand how to apply English or gearing or contact induced throw. You know, these are all concepts that, that, uh, that we as a community have a greater understanding of now through effort by people who took the time to put it on video and to understand it. I mean, there was people even before who diagrammed in books and understood what gearing and contact induced throw is, but now we have slow motion videos that show it, um, you know, and uh, maybe this guy just hasn't kept up with the state of the art in how to actually use these techniques objectively. So he's going mostly by feel and his feel let him down on many shots that one would never expect a guy of his caliber to miss. You know, there's a lot of variables in pool, but I know that one variable for me is, is taken care of and that is how to aim objectively. So I can use centered edge aiming and I can get to the exact correct shot line or I should say that as long as I apply the method correctly, I know that I'm on the right shot line, right? So I can I can always mess up and not not aim correctly or maybe see things a little fuzzy and jump in anyway and and not really be dead on the shot line, you know? but I'm still gonna trust it because I think that I applied it correctly. But the results are on the table, right? The more shots that I make, um, the more times that I, that I make tough shots, when I've used the center to edge method aim, of, of, of aiming, then it informs me, it gives me experience, and it gives me confidence that I know I'm right when I get down on the aiming. And then the best part of that is if there's any adjustment to be made, if I feel like I want to spin it a little bit or if I feel like I need to, to change or, or cheat the pocket a little bit, then I can adjust off of that line. Or as I just showed you, I can just not use center to edge aiming at all and I can go and, and base my hit on the fullness of the hit and how much that I want to use contact induced throw or spin induced throw or any combination thereof to make the ball. That gets him more into the feel realm, but it's, it's, what, it's what I would call an informed feel by practice. So there you go, you know? There's a lot of these guys out there that claim to be students of the game, and when they get on the table, it's clear that they're really not students of the game, you know? They just want to get on there and tell other people what to do or what not to do. For example, they want to steer people away from techniques that might work well for them for whatever ego reasons that they have, you know, they just they just like to argue on the internet or something, you know, or they like to they like to build themselves up as gurus um, in some way, I guess. But for me, the proof is always on the pool table, you know. Someone shows me a technique, I get on the pool table and I try it. And if I gel to it, and I can see it, and I can execute it, and I can see the results, then it's good, you know? But just telling me that the only way that I can have any chance at getting any good is just by rote, just by brute force rote repetition, um, that's not going to fly because here's a guy that has claimed you know, and there's been reports of him actually going to the pool room and, and practicing for four hours every morning. 
here's a guy that will assume he's telling the truth that that his whole game is based on brute force hitting a million balls repetition and yet he still misses shots badly he misses position um, you know sometimes he makes good shots sometimes he makes great shots sometimes he misses or dogs easy shots so if he's an example of, of a skill level based on, on repetitive brute force rote practice again we don't know exactly what he's actually ever um, worked on you know I don't know that he's actually ever worked on aiming in his life you know he may have just gotten up there and started shooting pool and and uh, you know maybe he learned ghost ball like a lot of us did at the very beginning and then he kind of abandoned it and went with feel uh, or he sort of kind of looks at the ghost ball I don't know okay but what I do know is that he's a he's a constant critic of the center to edge aiming method and when you watch this match uh, his aiming isn't that great you know so there you go so maybe he needs some CTE in his life you know then he would be then he would be in my opinion if his stroke and if his stroking technique and everything is is actually pretty good uh, then he would be in my opinion an even better player than he is now thank you